humans of the cardboard welcome back to just us guys today we have finally some news i pre-recorded a handful of videos but not enough for an entire week and i was kind of getting nervous that we were just like not gonna get new card reveals throughout the week at all and i was just gonna have like three to four days of just like nothing to upload while i was away but we did get this and i am excited for this one um it's for higher support pretty interesting we haven't seen for higher support in a minute um and i kind of forgot how this archetype worked i thought it worked albeit better than it does um you'll see the new cards are actually pretty good it's two new cards it's a main deck monster and a link two let's jump into this thing let's go over this um let's go over this here also my shirt is awesome picked it up yesterday very happy about another hawaiian shirt Okay, here we go. Starting off here, we have... Oh, by the way, Hop on Yu-Gi-Oh! Organization. Shout out to them. They're awesome with news. Um, if you want to follow along, read along, uh, and see the artwork as well. Um, just because I, I probably won't have time to add it into the video here. But, uh, yeah. Here we go. We have Rex Cargo for Hire. This is an Earth Dinosaur effect monster. It's a level 2, 300 attack, 200 defense. Uh, they love to do this with for hires. I think almost all their monsters are like different type monsters. Pretty cool. Uh, and dinosaur. So technically fossil diggle search it. It may have some other little synergies there, but not really big dinosaur stuff. Unless they get like a generic awesome link monster. I don't see this guy really coming up, but yeah. Okay, you can only use his first and second effect um, once per turn. The first effect reads, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one spell trap card for hire from your deck to your hand. It's pretty good. Um, as far as I know off the top of my head, there are two at least like decent uh, for hire spells. They're both quick play spells, which is always good. One of them is just like the quick effect monster read more to help you extend. The other one being like the swallow's nest type card. I think it tributes a it tributes a for hire or tributes any monster and then summons a for hire from deck with uh that's either one level higher or one level lower than the monster you tributed so like theoretically this guy at least just gets you to beat super easily because beats level three so just use this normal this search uh search the quick uh, the the swallow's nest tribute it for beat and then if you have any other for hire you kind of have a play and then you have this guy's second effect which is during the main phase, if you control a monster for hire, quick effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a card for hire that's in your grave. Keep in mind, card, not spell trap or monster. Add it to your hand, or if it's a monster, you can special summon it instead. That's really sweet because it kind of works twofold potentially. The first thing is like, okay, just cool, like extra extension as you're kind of link climbing gets you that extra body on the field, potentially helps you make a full go with one less card at times. Definitely like that. Um, as well as potentially having interruption. If you can just get to full go anyway, you may be better just leaving this because this is a quick effect. If you have something like, I want to say it's, they have the two little guys, Dompa and Recon, I think are their name. They respectively pop like face up and face down cards when a for hire summoned while they're on the field. So if you can end on one of those and then save this engrave, you'd be able to just like quick reborn another month, another one of the for hires, and that would get you a pop on the opponent's turn. So uh, there's some interesting utilizations there as well. And other than that, it's just like a pretty good follow-up. Although you could also like use it to just add, once you've gone through either the um, the Swallow's Nest or the, mon the Quick Effect Reborn, you could also just add those back from Grave and just set them. That way, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get like, I don't know. I just think that's a little more solid than just summoning one uh, other one straight from grave but we'll take it um pretty good all things considered i think this card is solid um the one problem with this card i would say is that like i kind of forgot how for hires worked and the fact that they all just have a like slow main phase effect to say like summon a for hire from hand and their other bonus effects all trigger when a for hire is summoned while they're already on the field it becomes a little bit clunky because like this guy is like searching you a spell trap. The spell trap's probably summoning you another monster. Like if you're going for the swallow's nest card and then you need to still extend. So it like, no matter, even if you're going through this card, you're still kind of losing to like Valor Imperm type stuff. This deck kind of just works similarly to, um, 
uh, I would say, um, what's it called? Uh, the older, uh, Yosenju, right? Where they kind of just need to keep pulling each other out of the hand with effects on the field. Flunders kind of work like this, but Flunders just have better tools to work around their own weaknesses. Uh, like, but whereas these decks don't as much. And I guess this deck is kind of helped out by the fact that it doesn't have to all happen in one chain or not one chain, but like they keep, you know, adding chains to each other to kind of like, uh, like new chains to keep, just keep playing. Um, it can be cut down. If you have an extender, you can kind of just keep going from there. It's weird. It, it, it is weird the way it works. Um, I kind of wish that more of them had effects where they just said, like, if you control it for hire, summon it from hand, because that would make this card way better. You would just be able to search any monster, plop it on the field immediately, like, link them off, and then this would reborn one. It'd be like a one-card Fulgo. Unfortunately, they don't have a monster like that. But if they got one monster, this card would immediately become, like, a one-card Fulgo for the deck, which would be awesome. But, yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah, like the second, I think the card's good all in all. It's a Stratos that also quick effect reborns or add backs. I mean, it's technically just like a plus two. So in terms of advantage, you love it. Um, it's just, it doesn't take any two card combos to being one card combos, but it can help with consistency. It, once you get in rotation and the ability to like get it, like keep summoning a guy like this out, it's really good. You're just going to run away with advantage. So we do like that. Maybe some other good spell traps would be nice to uh, add to the pool uh, for the deck as well. All right, then for the second card, we have uh, Dona, the dagger for hire. This is the new Link 2. Uh, also, the dinosaur, extremely cute. Super cute. Uh, yeah. Uh, so here we go. This is an Earth Beast Warrior Link Effect Monster, 1600 attack. Uh, it points straight down and then bottom right. So two downward arrows, pretty solid. It takes any two monsters with different names or different types, sorry. Uh, so very, very generic. This will be easy to make in any deck. And technically it, it has some generic effects as well. All right. Uh, and then you can only use one of its effects once per turn. So like uh, it has two different effects, but you can only pick one to use every turn, which is kind of weird. Uh, I felt like the card's not overly, overwhelmingly powerful, but you'll see. Uh, first effect says you can target one monster for higher you control, and any monster your opponent controls, destroy them both. Um, it doesn't say both, it just says destroy them, so I do think you can, uh, even if your opponent removes this card, it would still pop theirs. Um, but yeah, uh, the, this is fine, just like a decent removal. Um, ideally, you don't want to give up him, uh, like the, the link to out it, but like worst case scenario, this could even be a, a generic out to certain stuff. Like, why am I making... Nightmare Cerberus, where I have to discard a card, or I could just summon this and just trade this for the for the monster I'm going after. Especially if you're playing like a Greyguard centric deck and whatever you linked off kind of let kind of like is gonna float you back into resources, whatever. Like I could see that being a thing that this card could be generically used at times like that. But sure, it's just a removal. Cool. Second effect, you can tribute one monster. Any monster. Special summon one monster for hire with a different original name from your hand or graveyard. Then, if you tributed a link monster, you can special summon a second such monster. Really weird text on that, but like, long story short, if you tribute another monster, you summon it for hire from hand or grave. But if you tribute itself, you just summon two. That's pretty good, uh, I think, all things considered, especially because you, you can just get like for Fogo, I think Fogo needs three different monsters with different types. So like making Link 2s doesn't really help with going into Fogo lines. So uh, getting two monsters back that are different types just kind of helps you facilitate Fogo way better. Um, so we'll take that. Um, and also like uh, the deck reborns cards really easily. So like this is still just a card you do want to get in rotation because we've got the quick, we've got the reborn right? We've got uh, now the new the new dinosaur, which can reborn any for hire and grave. So just being able to get this back out so that you can just like keep extending later on actually becomes nice. It almost feels a little bit more like um, the train link to where it just kind of trades, like it consistently trades you for like kind of little plus ones here and there. You just want to get it set up because it can kind of, the deck can get it back from grave really easily. Uh, not quite as good as the train link too, but like a similar idea in terms of how you're utilizing it. Except this one also offers you removal. So like, cool. It could just be recursive removal every turn, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the two new cards. Um, I like them. I don't love them. I think the archetype needs a lot. They need extenders that don't work the same way that the other extenders work. Like two quick play spells 
are realistically the only way you beat getting Baylor or impermed. And, and that's not, that's not great. There's no one card combo. So you do, uh, you could struggle sometimes with consistency as far as like seeing like, the, like two of the right usable cards to be able to keep like playing and, and at least have combo. And I also wonder about how good the decks like end boards really are because you have to get to the big dragon guy. You might want to get to the big, whatever, I think she might be a sea serpent. No, maybe she's a spell caster. Got the spell and trap negate, the monster negate. And then like, what do you do after that? There's not a ton of interruption the deck offers, offers after that aside from like having a decoy or a recon on the field already and then quick summoning a monster. Um, so I wonder how easily the deck sets that up. Um, also, this deck is not a tri-beast archetype. Um, I, a lot of people theorize maybe when like tri, uh, Tri-Brigade came out that maybe those would pair together, but like, look at these two new monsters. Well, not the, both of them, but the new main deck monster, which matters more, is he's a dino. Oh, also, you know what? Respect to this card. This card could come up as a for hire or as a Tri-Brigade tutor where like Tri-Brigades can just cheat it out and then you just go, yeah, pop a monster. That could actually be a thing. Hmm, that could be like a spicy tech for Tri-Brigade builds, but whatever. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it, the deck The deck is so all over the place. You've got a warrior, you've got dinosaurs, you've got dragons, spellcasters. They're not Tri-Beasts. There's a couple Tri-Beasts in there, but like it's not enough to really facilitate Tri-Brigade enough. So it's weird. Um, I still love the deck. I love the artwork. I love like the, the aesthetic design of it. Like it's just a bunch of animals that are all part of this like, uh, what like bounty hunting crew and they do some, I, you know, I love the lore behind it. Um, they just need something else. I mean, these are good, these are solid pieces, but they need a lot of pieces to really get even to like, I would argue a rogue level at all. But yeah, it's just a really fragile deck. Hopefully down the line, they'll get more support, but I'll take these, they're solid. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion there, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. And let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about these cards. I haven't touched Tri-Brigade since like maybe the first two or three months they came out. I thought they were cool. I love the aesthetic. And I very quickly learned that they just like could not keep up, especially with hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, especially Valor and Perm being played in like most decks. I mean, this format, Valor and Perm are like the second and third best hand traps behind Ash. So like everybody's playing them. Um, and they decimate this deck. So let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear those. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the next video. And uh, peace.